Hey y'all. Hello and how you doing? Uh, I think we better go over a few things. Uh, there's been some activity. Uh, so let's look at what's going on worldwide with the earthquake situation. Here is not a good one. Anything in here <coughs> that would wake up the volcano is no good. Even though it's a 3.0 in Wyoming, which uh, that was Monday, that is not good. So there are also some smaller ones that have occurred over here in uh, Arkansas area. They are in the two range. Uh, so Arkansas, we've not forgotten about you and all the rumbling and grumbling. So you're getting it, and, and we pray for everyone along the New Madrid because we know there's things that's going to happen. Uh, this is a storm, a hurricane, Beatriz, and the last that I checked, uh, the wind speeds were right about 75 miles an hour. So we'll have to keep an eye on this and see what kind of uh, storm it's going to work itself into or whether it's going to break apart. Probably the biggest activity uh, right now, one of two places, and this is uh, Chile. Now, I've checked another report with the USGS, and they, they're rating it at 6.3. So, you can figure they got anywhere from a 6.5 to a 6.3, and out of that, there was also a... Uh, uh, tsunami warming warning had also been issued along with that. I'm way farther down here, and this would be the 19th. That would be uh, Sunday, I believe. And this is a 5.5 in the South Sandwich Islands region, and then right there on the 21st, which is now in the a.m. of Tuesday, they also had a 4.9. We'll just kind of... Now there is a little bit of throughout here. Not real big, but not real small. You had in the northwest section of Kashmir, 4.6. That's uh, the 21st. And you had a 4.9 and. India on the 20th and they had a 5-3 on the 20th in the Myanmar China region I keep coming back to right here though this whole little thing around here Indonesia and they have dropped in intensity a little bit 4-8 on the 19th by 5 on the 19th, or 6 on the 18th, but you flip, keep flipping through, or 7 on the 18th, 4, 8 on the 20th, and you get to drift. It just goes all the way around this line, popping all the way down the line. And you come over here, and this would probably be the second biggest one to talk about, 6.1 in the Santa Cruz Islands. And then a 5.5 on Vanatau. They're pretty close together, so five and a half to six in that region. Two, five, one in Fiji on the 19th. Four, eight in the 20th. Five and a half on the 18th. Four, six on the 19th. Now New Zealand, right now they're <coughs> kind of lulled for the moment. And then a little, little bit over here in the middle of nowhere on the Pacific Arctic Ridge, Antarctic Ridge, and you get yourself a 4.9. So we have some other, other actual smaller ones, a 4.4 in Panama, and a 5.0, you know, South Panama. We, also, we already know about Peru, so they were thumping before 
you know, this six and a half here. And we're still getting a bunch of little pop-offs down here in the Virgin Islands as a 4-1 on the 19th. In the Puerto Rican uh, region gets popped off with threes. Uh, they seem to be all the time, you know, right here too, in the threes. Pretty consistent for that little small, little curvy region. Uh, we are not going to pass by Japan. They got a 4 9 on the 20th and a 4 3 on the 19th. So they've kind of lulled a little bit, but not for long. You see consistency throughout everywhere. 3 9, 18th on Alaska, 4 0, 19th. And then we know they had a, what was that, a 5? by magnitude a few days ago and this is your uh, California region and you see they're consistently twos pops twos to threes all the time which they did get this uh, 4.2 on the 18th and then way up here you just get a two in Washington so it's something going on all the way down this line <clears throat> and you can see the uh, storm line well we're going to talk about the Missouri River too because we got some serious serious issues with that um, they're going to get some more rain it's going to get wetter they're releasing more water from the dams and put more into the levees and we're seeing failures and makeshift levees being made. Uh, there's reports that they're running low, low on sandbags to be able to sandbag anything anymore. Uh, that, boy, I didn't know you could run out of sandbags, but apparently you can. Um, and there's issues with the Nebraska nuclear plant. Um, or fears of contamination from leakage into the Missouri River area waters in that area that would then tie in with the Mississippi and flow out to the Gulf and that is definitely not good um, you know, the media is being controlled and told to shut it down which is what we will discuss here in a little bit Or they're too stupid to report on it. But something's wrong with that. Whenever you're getting a flooded nuke facility and you're not getting massive coverage out of it. <clears throat> so we'll come back to that here just shortly. Um, the Mercury Messenger makes big finds on a small planet. You know, Mercury, they've been eager to know a little bit more about this planet. And I'm going to show you something that, um, well, I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, you hear this man discussing a couple items. And uh, towards the end, it's, it's telling you uh, how they are hypothesizing that Mercury got to be form like like it is you know its size and stuff so take a listen here a year after slipping into is helping scientists study the solar system's densest planet in more detail than ever before researcher Ralph McNutt says mercury is turning out to be more active than planetary scientists gave it credit for Comments to the contrary, Mercury ain't the moon. We're finding out that Mercury really is a world in and of its own. And we're finding that um, just like the Earth, it's got its own personality. Messenger is the first spacecraft to orbit Mercury, so this is the first time scientists have been able to study it up close. One of the big questions, has the planet closest to the sun been baked dry yet? 
New scientists explain there may still be water ice hanging around the planet's deepest craters. So far, Messenger is leaving open the possibility that the planet whose sunlit side is hot enough to melt lead could harbor ice. Messenger's laser altimeter has mapped the topography of the region, and that data suggests that some of these radar-bright areas are indeed permanently in shadow, thought to be a key requirement for ice to survive. More of Mercury's mysteries. Why does it have wisps of an atmosphere when it lacks the gravity to hold one? And why does it have a magnetic field when larger planets like Mars and Venus don't? A writer for CBC News says Messenger is filling in those gaps, too. Mercury's magnetic equator is north of the planet's geographic equator by roughly a fifth of the planet's radius. That means its south pole is far more exposed to charged particles than its north pole, and may help explain the presence of the planet's exosphere, a tale of elements such as sodium that are kicked off the surface by charged particles from space. Finally, the spacecraft is also helping figure out how Mercury formed. Some theories that Mercury was once Earth-sized, but had its extra mass baked off by the sun, haven't squared off with Messenger's findings. A writer for Sky and Telescope tells us about the theory still in play. Still standing among the major formation theories is the Big Splat scenario. That is, Mercury was initially somewhat bigger, but early on the planet suffered a massive hit that stripped away most of its early crust and mantle, leaving behind its core and not much else. By studying Mercury, the researchers hope to learn more about planet formation, including the conditions of our early solar system. The Messenger mission is scheduled to last until spring of 2012. For the Huffington Post, I'm Christina Hartman. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, that grabbed my attention right there. Uh, towards the end, whenever we saw those two scenarios they talked about, that Mercury had uh, their crust baked off by the sun, well, that must have been a really hot one to bake off the crust. So, uh, there's one scenario of how a planet gets messed up by the sun. You get your crust baked off. And the second one was what we're watching Elanon for and all the other objects. What did they say? It was somewhat bigger in the past, they think, and it got hit. And knocked some chunks off of it, or a big chunk, and it became smaller. <clears throat> So again, uh, we see the sun and we see getting hit in some hypotheses even though it's about Mercury. Now, has anybody ever heard of uh, something called the Black Knight Satellite? I was listening to uh, Coast to Coast, George Norrie, and he had a, a guest on there, I believe it was Coast to Coast, don't quote me on that, I can't remember. Uh, that one right offhand, but the guests mentioned that they had found an alien satellite back in 1959 or 1960, and he said you could Google it and find different things about it. Well, I Google it, it caught my caught my ear, and I'd never heard of it that I could remember, and I could find some writing on it, some reading, but I didn't find very many videos. But this is supposedly a NASA picture of this object called the Black Knight Satellite. I can't believe I didn't ever hear of this and, and that this is dated, uh, oh, you know, over a year ago that I found this, this video. There was only a couple of videos that I could find on the internet at all about it. I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, since that might be why I mentioned Coast to Coast uh, because I was watching another episode when I had Richard Hoagland on there and Hoagland mentioned uh, something that kind of rattled me a little bit but he doesn't seem to think Elenin is is anything I mean he's thinking it's way far away uh, and it's not as big as what we're thinking it is and he believes it's kind of inconsequential and a lot of uh, stuff is being devoted to it that shouldn't and he actually termed it as uh, fear porn you know the warnings and everything and what we're looking at so I, I'm not sure if he's disinforming on that or what 
I got a feeling he is on that issue. I think uh, sometimes he may be interjecting true and mixing it in with disinformation or maybe he's got it right but uh, he had a little opinion about Ellenin and I just told you what it was that was a few days ago on that coast to coast you may be able to find that I think it might have been the 15th but he claimed there was an object out there that was uh, a giant spaceship and that it was independently controlled of course and it was coming this way and so I thought, hmm, this Black Knight thing's kind of interesting. Maybe it's got a little something to do with what Hoagland was talking about. But take a look at this. In an attempt to solve the 13,000-year-old mystery of the mammoth's extinction in North America, investigators trace the fallout pattern of potential alien debris scattered across the continent. They are trying to pin down the epicenter of what they suspect was an apocalyptic cosmic impact. From specks of extraterrestrial dust, a frightening picture begins to emerge. The type of energies we're dealing with are perhaps a hundred times that of nuclear bombs. The intensity of the heat would be incredible. check these pictures out see what you think they claim they're from NASA so does this look like something we made in 1960 
Well, well, well. What'd you think of that? A little bit interesting to me. What is it? They say it was a probe. I found another video. But in that video, NASA was supposedly retrieving it. Hooking on to it and getting it. But what I saw in the other video did not resemble any of the pictures that we just looked at right here. So, if that is a real object, I guess we were never told what it was. And that's something to think about. Now, we're going to move on to the Missouri River flooding. Um, and I'm going to read some of this to you because it's more serious than what they're telling us. A shocking report prepared by Russia's Federal Atomic Energy Agency on information provided to them by the International Atomic Energy Agency states that the Obama regime has ordered a total and complete news blackout relating to any information regarding the near catastrophic meltdown of the Fort Calhoun nuclear power plant located in Nebraska. According to this report, the Fort Calhoun nuclear plant suffered a catastrophic loss of cooling to one of its idle spent fuel rod pools on June the 7th after this plant was deluged with water caused by the historic flooding of the Missouri River which resulted in a fire causing the Federal Aviation Agency to issue a no-fly ban over the area. Located about 20 minutes outside downtown Omaha, the big largest city in Nebraska, the Fort Calhoun nuclear plant is owned by Omaha Public Power District, who on their website denies their plant is at a level 4 emergency by stating, this terminology is not accurate and is not how emergencies at nuclear plants are classified. Russian atomic scientists in this FAAE report, however, say that this OPPD statement is an outright falsehood as all nuclear plants in the world operate under the guidelines of the International Nuclear and Radiological Event Scale, which clearly states the events occurring at the Fort Calhoun nuclear power plant do indeed put it in the level 4 emergency category of an accident with local consequences thus making this one of the worst nuclear accidents in US history though this report confirms independent readings in the United States of as they say negligible release of nuclear gases related to this accident, it warns that by the Obama regime's censoring of this event for political purposes, it risks a serious blowback from the American public should they gain knowledge of this being hidden from them. Well, if that's accurate information, then we have ourselves a problem. We already knew something was coming. The New Madrid. We don't have an earthquake there yet. But isn't it interesting that you could put uh, a separation in between earthquake and put flood right next to it? Now think about that. An earthquake's coming. We're sure of that. But a flood, they didn't say that's why they were going to have the great shakeout and the activity through May 16 through 20. But it is interesting that they had all those people there and then we had all those storms that tore everything up and in the south and that they were they were there in the New Madrid already so we got it real wet we got all that tremendous 
weight by volume of that water on that ground. Let me tell you, water, that's a lot, a lot, a lot of weight. <clears throat> weight that it's not used to having. Uh, and now we're getting all that Missouri River, same thing. And from what I'm getting, they are releasing water from the dams to try to keep the dams from uh, giving away. And in doing so, they're putting a lot of water in the levees. And the levees are, as we know, some are failing. And they are sandbagging to try and rope, rope it off, bag it off. But uh, as I said, I've seen articles where they're saying now they're running out of sandbags and running low on sandbags. So I guess I have to truck sandbags in for, from wherever they can get them. And this is very disturbing because we're talking radiation. And we know what Japan is doing, getting radiation in all, all their dumping it in the ocean on all the water you know, all the contaminated water they have stored with with the nuclear contamination in it well, we're getting reports that some of it they're, they claim they're disposing of and the rest of it they're secretly putting into the ocean again and, and getting rid of it that way and now we're, we're over here now, from what I believe about the weather they had a, uh, I don't, didn't really see the location of it, but I know they had a tornado in uh, Nebraska somewhere today. So there was just a lot of storms going on. Um, we had some eerie skies here. I believe over in the eastern part of the state we got some rain and stuff, but uh, my town didn't get anything, thank goodness. Uh, that doesn't mean we won't, because there's a lot of hot air that's built up. It's been really hot here. Um, whenever I was on my lunch break and 10.30 break, I was outside and I was looking. And over in my east to southeast, when these storms were rolling in, and there were some really, I mean, long, long, big giant cloud sheets. Uh, it looked like they were layered. The real pretty white, bright ones were on the very top. And you could see a little bit of them. And then underneath of them, it was just dirty, dark, spotty, brownish ones. But anyway, back at 9.30 and 10.30 break, <clears throat> I was sitting out there watching that stuff. And I lost count of how many, time, how many flashes I saw in the sky of lightning. Now, it wasn't, uh, there were very few of them that were just the regular lightning that comes down like lightning you would think of. But most everything just looked like a, you know, like a, like an explosion light. You couldn't even really see the lightning. It was so far away or something or blocked. But it was just boom, 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 boom. I, I guarantee you it done that over, I guarantee it was over a hundred times in ten minutes. I couldn't count it fast enough. And I just sat there and watched it. And, and then I had to go back in. But I don't. Uh, know anything happened over that way but I'll know here directly because my sister lives over in that eastern part and she hadn't called me or anything and they have a they have a shelter to go in they built a, a shelter she got her home destroyed two or three years ago by a tornado so that is not good with the weather doing what it's doing and we're flooded out here in Nebraska at this nuclear facility uh, with the threat of tornadic, tornadic activity uh, and the, it's going to get worse because um, they're getting they're going to get rain and then we still don't have all this melt off done yet so it's going to continue it's going to be a long thing and, and uh, we got to keep our fingers crossed that, that uh, either those levees don't domino and just break under all this new stress it's not used to having under them 
or the bigger one like a dam or something breaks so we're in a major major situation <coughs> and everyone along the New Madrid should still be uh, really really concentrating on watching what's going on because they're not giving you all the information you gotta find it and you gotta pull it yourself because the media is just uh, uh, well they're the media you know just a paid mouthpiece half the time more than half the time now this we need to pay attention to also because like I said uh, I always seem to be drawn right over in here I don't know why but this region here to me seems like the crease in the world that something bad is going to happen over here pretty soon I don't know how soon but you see a little triangle here and New Zealand got popped the other day and then we already now we have a 6.1 here and you know we had some uh, other activity not long ago in this region and you see right here at the tip Fiji and Tonga they still keep playing around here in this mix so we see a big line that runs all the way up takes a left and rolls all the way around here now I think this area here is the most prone to something bad I mean Indonesia already got hammered before and then right here you just follow the follow the brick road and you get to Japan so the world is kind of sort of in a strange description kind of like a baseball you know a baseball is six seamed together and everything this is what this reminds me of just in a weird way to look at it you know it's a weird kind of a seam and it, it just has some of its weaker areas than others but um, we're all getting a piece of the action everybody's getting it it hasn't let up and I don't believe it's it's going to I think it's going to intensify we're sure it will the timeline is everything that uh, we've already discussed nothing seems to have changed in the timeline um, so we're watching I'm watching um, I'm praying for everyone out there you know we're almost through the month of June and we're gonna need everything we got really and just hope that we're wrong I pray every night also that I'm wrong I don't say it enough but I, I want everybody to know I hope that I'm wrong you know people that I talk to uh, some of them say well, you kind of want to be right don't you and I'm like no I don't want to be right I want to be wrong you know I want us all to be wrong but I don't think that we're going to be and in that event it's time to to get ready time to share this trying to help people uh, another thing I want to say is uh, I don't do this for money you know, little things on your YouTube page or, you know, share this video or whatever and and you can get paid for it. I don't want to get paid for it. That's not why I started doing it. I know there are those that get paid for it and get gifted and junk like that. But I don't want any of that. If that's what they want to do and that's what they want to do. But for me that's not for me I'm just in it to help people or try to
Um, there's been no other real thing at the moment that I'd like to highlight. We do know we got volcanic activity. We know all about the uh, Ethiopian area earthquake and then the spew of the volcano. And we already knew about the Chilean volcano spewed. Um, so that's another deal that we could get into, but it would take a little, a little longer. But when earthquakes start waking volcanoes up, then it's getting to be serious business. And our planet has got serious business going on all over it. The planet mainly comprised of water. It is a water planet. And we are getting our share of water. So everyone that lives in those regions, I pray for your safety and that God gives you strength. You know, don't give up hope, no matter what. Together we'll all stand through this stuff. Or each and every person that tries to be by themselves will probably fall. So we gotta be we gotta be together on this stuff, people. And I know that we are. Well that's what I have for you right now. This seems to be the most uh, important things. And then I wanted to uh, put in those little space things about what they have said about how Mercury may have been formed. And it's interesting to think about getting hit by a planet or an object whenever that's what we're looking. Uh, hopefully that won't happen, but some serious stuff looks like it will happen. <coughs> or the crust being baked off like they said and we know uh, we're probably going to get some heavy solar activity coming up in a while so that's why it grabbed my attention whenever I heard those two theories on that planet and then uh, I wanted to show that Black Knight satellite because that was that's really odd to me it doesn't look like any design I've ever seen for U.S. and that being 50 years ago. Uh, looked like something not of this world. Maybe Anunnaki, huh? Do you think? Well, I'm going to let you all go. i got to check some stuff out about that weather over where my sister lives. And uh, I've got something else in my mind and I'm going to put that down for everyone tomorrow night. So until then, I appreciate all your mails and your videos and uh, being friends with everyone. And I keep all of you in my prayers daily. And I hope the Lord blesses you and strengthens you and watches over you. I'll see you all later. Good night.